Hi, I'm Pamela with Pamela's Products and welcome to my kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make really great and easy holiday pies. And we're going to do that using my Pamela's Artisan All-Purpose Flour Blend. But I want you to know that you can also make these pies using the Pamela's Bread Mix. If you use the small bag, there's a yeast packet inside, so don't use the yeast packet. All right, let's get started. First, we're going to use two and a half cups of the artisan flour. When you're measuring out, be careful that you're not packing the flour. You just want to lightly fill your cup, scrape off the top. There's one, two, and two and a half. If you pack your flour, it's going to affect how dry your, your pie crust is. To this, I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. And I like my pie crust to have a little extra flavor, so I like to use two teaspoons of sugar. You can omit the sugar if you want to. There is no sugar or salt in the artisan flour blend. I'm gonna mix that up quickly. Great, now I'm going to add my fats. I want my fats to be really cold, so I've left them in the refrigerator using eight tablespoons of butter and eight tablespoons of shortening, and I've cut them all into little pieces. Right, I'm gonna add those now to the flour blend. Again, you want your fats to be really, really cold. This will help with the flakiness of your pie crust. In it goes, and now we'll start. I like to use my KitchenAid mixer with the paddle attachment. It makes it really easy and fast to make a pie crust. But if you don't want to, you can use the old standards. This is a pie crust pastry cutter. And what you do is you would just cut in your, your fats into the flour blend. If you don't have one of these, using your fingers just to incorporate that fat and the flour together. This is by far the easiest way to go. It takes about a minute. We're just breaking up the fats and coating them with the flour blend. While I'm doing this, I want to get my water really, really cold. So I just randomly added some water to a Pyrex measuring cup and I'm going to add some ice cubes to it. Hey Pamela, Linda met from Ohio and said hello. Hi Linda. How are you doing? Are you planning on making some pies this, this holiday season? Okay, I want to show you what, what your dry mix is going to look like. You've got your fat broken up into the flour blend. You can see that it looks a little on the coarse side, and that's exactly what you want. To this now, we're going to add a third of a cup of water. So I've got my ice water. I'm going to add a third of a cup. And this is all there is to it. Slowly add in your ice water. Now I'm waiting to see if the water and my flour and fat mixture are incorporated together to the right texture. The thing about making pies, the thing that makes pies the problem, is when the texture's not right. Either there's not enough liquid or there's too much liquid. You don't want a sticky pie crust and you don't want a dry pie crust. So it's really what the pie crust looks like. And it has to do with how maybe you've measured uh, what utensils you're using. So I've mixed this. It looks a little dry. And now I'm going to add water by the tablespoon until I get the right consistency. I'm just waiting for the entire mixture to come together. So you want your pie dough with a nice soft 
texture. You can see how it's all come together. It's not dry, it's not breaking apart. This is a perfect pie crust for making pie. So today I'm going to make a double pie crust. Pamela, before you move on, we have a question from Adrienne Taylor. Do you have a dairy-free version for the pie crust recipe? So with the pie crust recipe, my favorite is to use half butter and half shortening, but you can certainly use the non-dairy substitutes. Um, you can also do 100% shortening if you want to. They all work. So today we're gonna to be doing that double crust pie. This is an apple pie, and this is what we're hoping to achieve at the end of this. So now we're going to roll out. We're going to be using a nine inch pie plate. I want to show you the difference between pie plates as well. This is a nine inch, this is a nine inch pie plate. This is a nine and a half inch pie plate, but you can see that there are different depths as well. Not every pie plate is the same, and so when you're making your pie crust, take that into consideration. Also, if you like a thicker crust or a thinner crust, you may use more or less of the pie dough. In order to make this pie, we're going to cut our dough into um, two-thirds and one-third. Two-thirds for the bottom pie and one-third for the top. Pamela? Is there another mix that can be used besides the all-purpose flour artisan blend? I would use the bread mix. The bread mix makes a great pie. Let me show you what that bag is again. This is the bread mix. This also comes in a four pound bag. Remember that if you use the small bag, there's a yeast packet envelope in and you do not want to use the yeast packet when you're making a pie crust. Angela wants to know if you're using the all-purpose flour artisan blend, can she use it as a one-for-one -one replacement for her grandmother's recipe? Yes. Again, remembering that you want to see what that dough looks like. You want it to be soft. You want it to come together. You don't want it sticky. And so much of what happens with recipes is how individuals measure out their ingredients. So I've got my pie crust. I'm gonna break it into one third and two thirds. Again, this is gonna be the top crust. And here's my bottom crust. So I'm gonna put this to the side. What I like to use for um, rolling out my pie crust is a plastic wrap. I like this because the plastic wrap stretches. You can also use parchment paper, um, but I like the look of uh, the way that the, the plastic wrap stretches and it's easier, it seems to roll. So. I'm gonna use two sheets and they're gonna be overlapping. And most plastic wraps work well. I like the ones that are not really sticky because it's easier to uh, use them. All right, I'm gonna put my dough into a disc and now I'm gonna cover it again with two more pieces. And then uh, pick your plastic wrap off the floor. <laughs> you know how many times I practice this. <laughs> okay, and here we go. The one last piece. All right. There, now we're set to roll out the top of our pie. I'm using my grandmother's, this is my great grandmother's rolling pin. I am from a long line of bakers. To make things easier on yourself, move your pie crust around um, while you're rolling it out. And the point is to get a nice round shape so it'll fit over your pie plate easier. Just roll. People are asking where they can buy your flour. So our flour is available, uh, natural food stores nationwide, conventional stores nationwide, and also on internet sites such as Amazon. And do you have the pie crust recipe? The pie crust recipe for both our bread mix and the artisan flour are available on our website. We have lots and lots of recipes available for you. And that's www.pamelasproducts.com. Exactly. 
You can also look for recipes based on the product that you have. So if you want to use the bread mix, you can plug in the bread mix and that will help you find the recipe for the pie crust. Right, so the point is that here's our nine inch pie plate and we're looking to get a size that fits that. So I just need to roll it out a little bit more. Jenna has a problem with making her crust. She says it breaks and it cracks. Do you so, have any tips? So Jenna, what I would do is I would add a little more liquid. It sounds like your, your pie dough is too dry. Okay, one more shot, and I think we've got our pie crust the right size. So now I want to take off my top two layers of the plastic wrap. And I'm going to use the pie plate to cut around so that I've got a nice round top for my crust. Just a butter knife, something easy. Cut it around and then just take off the excess. Someone wants to know if with this pie crust recipe, can you make a cream pie? A cream pie, such as a pudding pie, that would be making a pie crust that you're going to pre-bake so that it's baked because you don't need to bake the pudding. So yes, we you can absolutely use the same exact recipe and pre-bake it ahead of time and then add your filling. So now I've got my top already and I'm gonna put this to the side while I roll out the bottom. Nini Newman says, Pamela's anything is the best. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm gonna get my two pieces of saran. And again, this is so easy to do. You can also make these pies up in advance, which is really nice. All right, I've made a disc. I'm gonna cover it again with more saran. And we're almost ready to go. If you want to make a pre-baked pie crust, such as for a cream pie, you would bake this ahead of time bake it in a 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes, turn down the oven temperature to 375 and bake it out for another 10 to 15 minutes till your edges are golden brown. If you're making a regular pie, you want to make up your pie crust, add your filling, and then follow the directions regarding the particular pie that you're making. Pamela, can you use parchment paper also? Yes, absolutely. You can also do this with parchment paper. It works just as easy. And for those of you that might find that your pie crust sticks, if that happens, what you can do is just use a nonstick spray on the dough before you add the parchment paper to start rolling out. Again, uh, remember Drew to, has a question. Once the crust is put together, can you freeze the dough ball? You can freeze the dough ball. Uh, and when you take it out, just let it defrost. Keep it wrapped while it's defrosting. Okay, so now I'm going to check against my pie plate. Perfect. Take off my two top pieces of saran. Now, what I like to do is I like to always spray the bottom of my pie pan just to help with sticking issues. Even with wheat pies, I find that pie crust can stick. Just a little bit of a lubricant. Okay, there's my pie, I've got a butter knife. Now I'm gonna cut about a half an inch away from the edge because I need the pie crust to fall deep into the pie pan and still leave me a little bit of an edge. Now you'll notice that you're going to have a little bit of extra dough left over. 
this would be great for um, adding sugar and cinnamon on, making little treats. You could add jam and sugar, or you could also use some of this dough to cut out little decorative pieces, leaves, that kind of thing that you could use to decorate the top of your pie. Pamela, Stephanie Walker says, you make this look so easy. Well, you just saw me do it. It is easy. <laughs> I have to say that uh, people making wheat flour pie crusts feel the same. It's not about it being a gluten-free issue, it's about it being a pie crust issue. A lot of people are afraid to try it, but you can see how easy it was. All right, now we're going to flip over and make and put our pie crust into the pie pan. So here's really an easy way to do it. I stick my hand under, flip. Simple, huh? Now, with the saran still on, I'm going to just push the pie crust all the way down into the, my pie pan. And by leaving that plastic wrap still on, I'm able to touch it as much as I want. Be careful not to overwork your pie crust because you don't want the warmth of your hands to start melting the butter. Okay, so I have my pie dough in my pan. Pull off the saran. And there you go. So that's the start. You notice that a little piece broke off, not a problem. Just stick it back on, press it in gently. All right, before we fix the edge of the pie, I'm going to add the apple filling. So here's my apple pie filling going in. Pamela, Rena would like to know if she uses the deeper pie pan, does her pan crust at the bottom need to be thick or thin if she's gonna use a fruit filling like you're using here? I think that the larger the pie and the more filling that you would probably want a thicker crust to help hold all of that together when you're removing the pie piece from the pie pan. Okay, pie filling's in. It's now time to go get the top that we've already rolled out. You can see I have it sitting here, and I'm going to do the similar situation. I'm gonna put my hand underneath the plastic wrap, and I'm going to fold it right over the pie. There we go. Maneuver it around, pull off the plastic wrap. Just pull it off carefully. The great thing about baking is that we're not all perfect bakers. And no matter how it ends up looking, the most important thing is that it's going to taste great. So little things like a hole in your pie crust, take a little extra of the pie, the pie dough, and just gently patch it. Right, got my pie crust. I'm gonna now make an edge. Pamela, Kelsey wants to know, she said someone told her to poke holes in the bottom of the crust. Is this correct? I would do that if I'm doing a blind, just a pre-baked pie. That is so that the pie's not rising in the oven. There's no weight on it when you have no filling in it. And so sometimes pie doughs can have a, a tendency to rise up and you get a bubble in the crust. So to prevent that, you wanna add those air holes. So now I'm just fixing the edge. And just, you can do this in a, a variety of different ways. It's really about just pinching your doughs closed on the edge. Now, we're done with our pie. What I like to do is get a little bit of egg white, a little egg white wash, just whip it up. Coat your egg, coat the uh, egg white all over the crust. And here's a little secret for you.
So now in order to get rid of this little blemish, I'm gonna take some extra dough and I'm going to cut out with a little cookie cutter, some little pieces of dough and I can pop those right over my little mistake. Really easy. Pamela, Trish wants you to know that her teenagers are watching this with her and said there's no excuses, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and those teenagers should be making that pie for you, is my opinion. <laughs> Okay, so we've now got our decorative, our decorative uh, leaves on top of the pie. Colleen wants to know if you can use something instead of egg white for the wash on the top of the pie. You could use no egg wash, wash. that's also works fine. Um, some people like to use milk. Um, I, you don't have to use a wash at all, it, it makes it a little softer. Uh, a little shinier okay there we go now I've got a little couple leaves and then you can finish off by adding a little bit of sugar if you want to and now my pie is ready to go into the oven and bake so again it's going to bake at about 425 uh, 375 you want to take a look at your recipe what the filling calls for because not all baking temperatures are the same so let me show you a couple of pies that i've made here's our double apple and here it's baked here's a pumpkin pie And then here is a pre-baked pie. So easy, fast, you can do this. It's a great gluten-free pie by Pamela's using our artisan all-purpose flour blend. So happy holidays. Have a great time baking with your family. Any more questions? Well, Brooke wants to say, Pamela, I just want to tell you that you have brought wonderful tasting baked joy back into my life, and I am so grateful. Thanks, Brooke. Have a great year, everybody.